All right, in this little video, I'm going to show you how to align a mesh to an image to a CT data set and then make a CAD deviation analysis. So part to CAD or part to design comparison. So uh, I will demonstrate in Dragonfly how to align a bracket with its design. What we have here is a CT image data of a bracket. This um, slice view doesn't show you the, what the bracket really looks like. So I'll just show that with a quad view. And that's what the bracket looks like. And the design file, of course, is not aligned to it. So what we need to do is we want to, the aim of this is to make a deviation analysis, see how well the actual part co compares with the design. So we need to align them very carefully. For this analysis, we can uh, deviation analysis works on meshes. So the the design is a mesh file, a STL file, which was imported here, called stub axle support. And the image channel. Now we need a a mesh to um, to do that comparison with. So the way to make a mesh for, of the surface is to um, select a threshold. What we can do. On, this, on the segmentation tab, we can select define range upper Otsu. This is automatic thresholding. It finds the best threshold value for uh, defining the material. This is 31,473. You can cut and paste, cut and paste that if you like. Um, uh, we don't need to actually make the segmentation. We just need to make a, a mesh. So we right click on the image channel and generate a contour mesh. So um, 31,450 is the guess, pretty close to what the Otsu was. So we can also downsample that if you want to make a smaller mesh. I'm just going to do that the default method. And we will see a, a nice surface, um, sub-voxel surface of the um, bracket. So we see this little white line here. This represents the sub-voxel um, determine surface. If you want to look at that and figure that out or play with that yourself, you can go to the image channel um, settings here and look at the voxels directly and see how well that fits the gradient. You can also, I'm not going to go into more details here. I, 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 you can also make a line profile and check it. The point is we now have a mesh, so we need to, we can now align this mesh to the bracket. There's different ways to do that. Let's put, off the, let's put off the image data for a minute and put on this mesh. So this contour mesh of the actual bracket, let's make that a different color so that we can see that there. Now we've got, we can do a mesh registration, but sometimes it's might, it helps to align slightly manually this. So the first step to help the alignment here is to go to align centroid, align the center of the object to the, we, we're aligning to the stub axle and it takes, uh, takes two objects far apart close together. So that's a very fast first step. If we, um, let me just align this, these views and in this one also. All right, so I just refreshed the views so that we see both objects in the, in the 2D views like that so there's an easy alignment we can see so on this con contour mesh that we've made i'm now going to do a translate rotate on that so this translate rotate tool just to manually get the alignment roughly correct what we've got there is that and if we look in 3d this is now still upside down so we need to go in this view and turn it and move it slightly around like this and in the 3d view just took a minute to refresh there so now we are close enough so we can escape press the escape key to get out of this mode now we are close to an alignment not perfect but now we can do right click and there's a mesh registration tool you align the, the this contour mesh to the design and just apply the default parameters there. So I've manually aligned it 
close enough and then let the computer do the rest of the alignment work to get it um, with a, a type of best fit alignment. So um, there are deviations, of course, and now one, one thing you might not like is that the image is somewhere else. So the image data is somewhere else. So if you want, we don't need it here for the analysis, but if you would like to align it now, that's quite simple. You right click on the image and you go to uh, uh, modify and transform, apply transformation from. So if you now apply the contour mesh transformation, the things that happen to it, it aligns itself very nicely to the contour mesh. So it's aligned again if you want to do, if you need to use that for something. We don't need to use it. What we're going to do is we're going to use the contour mesh and we're going to apply a mesh um, assigned deviation map to the stub axle support. So this is then comparing the, the two meshes with one another to see the major deviations. That is for visualization purposes here, we can make the design mesh. Um, let me just see where is it? Uh, visualization. We can make that uh, visualization in 3D. You need to click on the 3D view for that. We, we would like to make that not solid, but wireframe. So that's sometimes quite useful. And I like to make my mesh yellow and we can make it slightly thicker. So in that way, we can more easily see where the mesh, where the actual part is deviating from the mesh. In this case, you can see that the two ears are walked towards one another. And also, if you look from the top, the, um, the design uh, sections in the middle are closer together than the actual component material. So the color mapping here, if you click on the color mapping, this is from purple to yellow, we can change that. Let's change that to a temperature color map. It's not uh, um, ranging quite well. So the way to change the range here from 64, it's, it's uh, quite a large range. So we right click on that and we go to measurement inspector. In measurement inspector, the range can be set to minus one to one, for example. And we see that's still a lot. So let's make that minus half a millimeter to half a millimeter. And we don't want to hide out of range measurements. We want to see them. So if something is more than half a millimeter, we it doesn't disappear. We still see it. And now you can quite easily see where deviations are um, positive and where they are negative. So in this case, where let's just um, the, sti the areas sticking out are blue and the areas under the design are red. We can also flip that. So um, you can do that. So that's how you make a, a CAD deviation analysis or a deviation map and vary its color rendering. And in the process, I've shown you how to align the uh, scan data to a design file. So I hope you find that useful and I hope that was a short enough video. Until next time.